Sleeper mode achieved. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony. This is Maritime Foam. I'm very excited about the project I'm going to talk about. I'm a big fan of the Raven, uh, which is a little bullpup blaster. One of the one of the first magazine-fed flywheelers, I believe. It's a surprisingly comfortable little blaster. It looks really cool. Um, bullpup because it takes that magazine in behind uh, behind the trigger. And yeah, it's a really cool, really neat looking blaster. Uh, they're a little bit, they're getting a little bit harder and harder to find. Uh, I have three of them, very fortunate for me. Uh, this one was at the bottom of an old tote. This one didn't work very well. So this one ended up being the one that, I, that was a little mod project. And I'm gonna show you some clips of how this performs now. And then at the end, I'm gonna show the kind of the whole overhead process video of me modding this today. Uh, I'm gonna start with the with the good stuff though, just because I'm sure lots of you would never wanna watch all of uh, me working through this and making lots of mistakes and all of that. But I'm gonna edit it together and put it up anyway because it might be handy to someone. Uh, I know for me, I watched uh, American Foam's video on doing a sleeper mod to the Raven and that was incredibly helpful. So not really a whole lot new from what I did, uh, I, I guess the only new thing that I would add is I'm not as good at it as him. So, you know, if you're new and you're wondering how hard is this going to be, uh, watching me stumble through it will probably give you a better idea of how hard it'll be for you. Uh, I'm terrible at soldering, as you may see if you watch. So before I bust out this one, which is my fully modded, uh, fully modded Raven, I'm keeping this one exactly uh, the way it is, I want it to look original, but all the locks are removed. It's running Daybreak flywheels. I'm not sure why I'm having trouble saying flywheels. It's running Daybreaks, uh, it's running Kraken motors, and it's running on 3S LiPo. Uh, I do have a cage in here from Out of Darts. The crush is, what is the crush? Uh, it's pretty high crush. Someone was asking me, I'll put a note in the in the video i need to actually check the packing slip i did so much reading on the different options for crush that i don't remember what i actually ended up going with in the end um with this thing right now this is getting in the 160s so it is a it is quite a performer it's really cool my caliber it only does about 200 so and that's a springer that's really good this is now the Except for that, this is the fastest blaster I have, which is, you know, amazing. And so cool to do this to an old toy. Um, just as a reference, this is an unmodded Raven. You know, just so you can hear the difference, I'm going to fire a couple out of this. You know, this one actually doesn't work too badly. Uh, what's the chronograph on this? 56, 60, 56. Um, you know, for an old blaster, uh, not not too bad. Let's see what our... Uh, I already know what the chronograph does, but let's do a couple more so I can share it with you. 165.6, 169.2, 164, 164.5. I am beyond pleased, beyond pleased with this thing. Um, I, I yeah, I, I'm just yeah, I'm giddy about it. It is super super fun to fire, and I purposefully there are kits to make this go full auto. I purposely wanted to keep this one uh, semi, so uh, there's no no auto pusher or anything in here. Uh, maybe I'll do another one full auto. That might be kind of fun, but I, I wanted this one to be to be semi. Um, the the spin up is so so fast on this that it's just it's going to be really fun to play around the yard. 
if I can convince the kids to play against me with this. This might be uh, an against the adults blaster. And I'm sure kids at parties would enjoy checking this out too, especially if I get them to check out this one first uh, to compare it against. So yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty fun. I'm going to go outside. I'll show you some shots against Bessie. Um, comparing with the other on Modified Raven and this one, and then we'll go into the full mod guide. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it interesting. Uh, if you have any advice for me, that'd be great. I've already gotten a bit of advice about maybe using a different battery from posting some pictures online. Um, you know, there might be a danger of burning out the motors. Uh, the way this is set up, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a hot ticket. Um, but, you know, I'm willing to take that chance because I, I really like how this works. So... Thank you very much for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed the firing demo and just <laughs> enjoy me gushing about this thing. <sighs> ah, you know what? I'm going to show you really quickly. I don't know. I don't know if I was able to show this in the overhead. Um, this is kind of cool though. Basically, pretty sure it's in the overhead. I don't know if this final part is, but I basically am able to fit everything in the uh, battery. Well, no, I'm not able to fit everything in. The battery is actually in here. There's a lot of dead space. I dremeled all that out that's in the video. Uh, so I just have the alarm and the XT60 connector in this space. So yeah, kind of cool. I, it's not very practical to get the lipo out and have to take the blaster apart. Um, I just wanted to be able to have an option for this to be a total sleeper using the original battery tray door. Uh, I'm going to 3D print an extended battery tray door. Um, it'll be more obvious that it's modded, but it will be much, much more practical. Um, but I, I really like, I, I really like having this as as an option for sure. So I could just, I'm just going on and repeating myself because I'm having a lot of fun with this thing. Uh, I <laughs> thank you very much for checking this out. I'm not done, but I want to do this part in the daylight. I'm going to take a couple shots of the stock Raven uh, at Bessie. <laughs> uh, I'll angle up. <laughs> Hey, I think I got her. And now a Raven with uh, Daybreak flywheels running on 3S and Kraken motors. That is very fun to shoot. And we hit all around Bessie aiming straight on. And here we are. Uh, this is going to be a mod video definitely uh, that I'll be recording over a few parts. It's pretty late right now. I'm not going to do this whole, this whole thing right now and get it all done. That is for sure. But I thought I would at least uh, pick which blaster I'm going to mod and... I also thought I would at least get things opened up and take a look inside. So let's talk for a minute about which one. Uh, to be honest, it's probably going to be this green one right here. Uh, the main reason for that is this one doesn't work very well. Um, this one works really well. This one seems to work okay. Uh, if I was going just based on looks, to be honest, I would go with this one. I like this color scheme of Nerf quite a bit, uh, but I, if I'm going to take apart and mod a blaster, I almost 100% of the time would rather do it to something that doesn't work that well stock. So I'm going to move these ones over to the side. Uh, I hope that this isn't the part where someone is screaming at home, no, don't mod the green one. It's so rare. Um, I don't think that's the case, but anyway, you, you let me know. I guess I had some batteries in this to try it out. 
so I'll take these out. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be switching this over from running on alkalines here. Let's get these out of here. These have not been used very much, so I'll put these back in my battery my battery basket. Uh, we're going to be switching this to run on 3S LiPo. I have a couple of Kraken motors that we'll be putting in. I have this cage as well for the Raven and I have some Daybreak flywheels. So, and I also got this little uh, printed switch plate holder from Out of Darts to make placement a little easier. Why not make it as easy as possible? A few people have talked about, hey, are you? this is a sem semi-automatic flywheeler, uh, a bullpup, the clip goes in back here. A few people have asked, uh, are you going to switch it over to be full auto? And honestly, I like, I, I have a couple blasters that are full auto and dump a clip in a second. And I kind of want a higher performing semi auto. I, I'm just going to keep it the way it is for now. We'll, we'll see what happens down the road. So let's open this up. This is always the exciting part to video. I'm sure we'll fast forward. We did it. All right, great. No wires or anything there. We will just set that aside. Uh, jam door. Let's get you out of the way. All right. So let's see. We'll put this over to the side too. Anything. We're basically going to be getting rid of uh, a bunch of stuff in here. Um, we're going to be rewiring this. This one had a bit of a sticky, a sticky trigger. I wonder why that was. We'll we'll be taking a look at that. We're gonna take a bunch of this stuff apart and see see what's what. We'll probably get rid of some locks as well. Um, yeah, so this should be this should be fun. I'm gonna have to stop quite a bit and and probably check out a few references and everything. Um, I'm not doing anything super original here or reinventing the wheel. So we will see we'll see how we do. I'm gonna start taking some stuff out of here. Uh, and stripping some stuff out. Solvent welded? What is happening there? It is solvent welded. Oh man. Uh, that's gross. I'm going to go up and I'm going to start my soldering iron. I'm going to desolder uh, these bits of wire from here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my battery, battery tray and all that. And we will start putting some stuff in place. All right, we're gonna get a little closer in into it. Uh, before I go up and start boiling water, uh, I'm just going to seat my motors in here in this cage, this tiny, tiny cage. Uh, oh, <laughs> you wanna make sure that the your motors, the polarity is in opposite so that when you have current going through them, they're spinning in opposite directions. Otherwise, your darts would do nothing. Uh, so we're seating the flywheels. You know, we want to put them on. We want to push them straight down. We want to make sure we don't bend the tabs on the back of our motor. And we want them seated really well in this cage. And this is usually the time when I'm doing things where I realize I've made some sort of terrible mistake and I have to somehow get these off. Um, this is not super, they're a little wiggly in there. That stresses me out a little bit. Huh, maybe, 
we might have to put a little glue in there or something if glue is a good idea um anyway we have those there that is that is some high crush that's some high crush on these darts holy panna well this will be this will be interesting to see if i've made a huge mistake wow this thing <laughs> this thing's going to chew, chew some darts anyway we will uh <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes so yeah so we have those we have those in our cage i might do something to make sure things are a little more secure than that that doesn't seem right oh i don't even know if you can see that there we go sorry it's a little hard working overhead i forgot to zoom back in all right so we have our motors and our flywheels in here they look like they're positioned pretty well uh we're gonna we're gonna do something to try to stop that wiggling i'll be checking what the best solution for that is um <laughs> kind of kind of wondering now if the best solution wouldn't have been to do something to secure that before I put my flywheels on. Remember when I said I usually discover uh, a, that there's a part where I've made a terrible mistake? Anyway, we'll, we'll see. That'll be later. All right. Uh, I'm going to, you know what? I'm not using this wiring for anything, so I'm just going to clip this off. I don't know why I was thinking I was going to desolder this old, terrible motor and wires we're just gonna we'll put that we'll put that aside over in the junk drawer i might need to uh heat up that solder to just pull those that other bit of wire through i'm going to plug in my soldering iron and then we will be back and we will have our Raven kind of ready to start doing some shell cutting or dremeling uh, and figure out where we're going to place everything. All right, I'm back for another part of my in-expert mod guide here. Uh, I did put in my cages and my flywheels. Uh, when putting in your, or sorry, I put, in my, I put my motors in the cage. Uh, this is a cage from Out of Darts that's specifically designed to fit the Raven, which is nice. Otherwise, you might have to do some shell cutting. I'm not going to have to do any, which is which is great. Um, when you're putting in your motors, make sure uh, it's marked positive and negative. Make sure when you put in both motors, they are opposite. Uh, because you need, when there's current, you need these motors going the opposite way so that the wheels will shoot the dart, actually shoot the dart through. And this is high pretty seems like pretty high crush i forget what i ordered but we'll see how it, we'll see how it does so I, I did notice too they're a little bit shaky and loose in here i'm gonna see if uh maybe a little bit of hot glue is okay to use i'm not really sure i'll have to experiment uh so i'm gonna put this cage aside uh down here uh speaking of hot glue uh before i do that this is also from Out of Darts. It's a, a little bit of a, I guess a little bit of a cheat, a little switch plate mount for the Raven to make sure that every, you know, to make it a little easier for you. The only thing is, is there is a little piece of plastic blocking that switch. Um, so I'm just going to give this one piece of plastic a snip. Uh, there it is there. And now, when we put on our arm on switch, like that, we have lots of room for clickiness. We put this trigger in here, and that, wow, that's, pre that's pretty cool. That's a great, that's a great bit. That makes things a lot easier. It's funny, I was talking to some people last night around, you know, uh, kits versus kind of doing everything on your own, and definitely doing everything on your own is a very satisfying thing. Um, and you know what, if I have something that is just like the passion nerf project of my life that I come across, I, I actually do have a couple ideas for builds. I want to do, um, something really, really, really custom, but for, you know, for something like this, that's been done by a bunch of people, I don't have any problem 
getting some things that save me some time, whether it's a cage specifically for this blaster or a switch mount. So that's just, that's just my thought. I kind of respect all the takes. I am going to, I'm going to heat up some glue. I'm going to glue this in, this in place so that I can uh, screw it down and start some soldering. Or maybe I'll do my soldering and then glue it down. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. Um, one thing, I think I went a little crazy taking stuff out. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I didn't need to take this out at all. I poured a bunch of water over it. Uh, I ended up kind of, <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't work. I, I kind of spent a lot of effort for nothing. Uh, I got this off and kind of stressed this a little bit. And for what reason? Because I was able to get this in uh, without taking this out. So I don't know. Sometimes we do things that are not entirely necessary. So I'm going to put this back in here just so that it's kind of in place. My, and my worst nightmare would, would definitely be that I get this together and I've forgotten to do something like this. That would be, that would be terrible. Uh, I'm going to put this in here like that. I might even, well, I'm going to, I'm going to lubricate this at some point, but I might even throw a screw back in here. I'm going to take out some wiring and we are going to cut off a length of wire. I will list afterwards, I'll list everything that I've used. This is a, this is not a 16 gauge. I think it's 12 gauge wire. Um, I'll list it in the, the description. Again, I warned you guys, I'm not a huge expert. So let's, while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna put this back in like this. I'm gonna put my, my switch in like that. And we will see, leaving kind of a bit of slack, how much space we need here. So I'm gonna wait, I'm not gonna cut this, I don't think until, well, I could. Uh, I was gonna say, I don't think I'm gonna cut it until after I have my, until after I have my my hole cut for my XT60 connector and the battery, but I think I would be okay <laughs> that no matter what I do, if I make it, I, I'd rather have a little extra. I'm still, I find whenever you're really new at something, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it almost pays to be a tiny bit wasteful um, in a way, because you really, 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 if you, once you're all done, I mean, would you really, what would you, what would you have paid in order to have uh, not, you know, cut something too short and made a mistake is kind of how I feel about it. Do, 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 oh, my soldering iron is taking a long time. Now I'm going to cut this, cut out some of the battery compartment. I do have on safety glasses. Okay, we have a hole with, I think, lots of room for our wiring. I'm gonna snip out a little bit of these, there's these little bits and bobs that were holding in the old wiring. I just don't want anything that has sharp little edges poking around. I 
have my sun iron maybe finally up to temp. Uh, and I have my negative wire that's going to go to the XT60. I feel like that was a bit more difficult because the switch was not in place. I'm actually going to glue it down. When we get back to normal times, I need a soldering lesson. I need, I need to actually physically be in the room and see someone who knows what they're doing uh, actually, you know, do a good job with a solder joint. I mean, this one is, at least now, is it is nice and shiny, um, but I mean, as you saw, that was not, <laughs> it was not a great job what I was doing. Uh, I'm gonna put this in this channel here, like so. Uh, this one is going to run up along here and then come up by my cage. I'm gonna put my cage in place. Bit of a tight thing to do with the, there we go, with that still in place. So let's put that in there. That gives us kind of an idea for, uh, it gives us an idea for length here. Uh, so we'll go up here and we'll run our negative along here. So again, I want there to be lots of room, lots of slack. I'm going to cut it way more than what I would need, like so. Got our hot glue going here. <laughs> so I'm just going to Uh, one thing I am going to do here well, before I forget, I am going to put on some heat shrink. Always a good idea to put your shrink on right away so that you don't end up in a place where you can't. I mean, I will admit my Jupiter, my first Jupiter has no shrink. I had such a hard time, as you can imagine with the soldering, that I just, I just skipped it. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a nightmare inside that one. We will strip off a little bit of this one. And we want this to go to the, and I mean, I only know this, I'm not much for knowledge of wiring either. I, I watched Brad from American Foam. I watched his Raven mod uh, and just followed his wiring di diagram for a while ago. But I mean, it's pretty similar once you get once you get used to doing a few of these, I mean, there's kind of similarities in the wiring of a lot of these simpler ones. There. That way we have a little bit of a physical connection too to help with my, my bad soldering. this in place here. This is ready. Yeah, soldering is definitely the, I think, a little bit of an art. It's uh, something I am not obviously good at at all. My solder is, soldering is definitely usually fairly blobby as I'm just like trying to make sure that something connects. I'm sure there are people, well, I'm not sure, but there might be people watching who are like, good Lord, somebody help this guy. Yeah, I mean, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, so we, I'm gonna put this, I'm not gonna actually do my shrink yet. I'm gonna run this up through. I don't know where I'm gonna run this through. I could run it through here. Maybe I will run it through there. Okay, so 
Let's snip out a little bit here for our, our terminal, probably right about there. We want to have, it's definitely good to have slack where you can. That is fine. Uh, so this will come up through here. This will get soldered on here. And then with a little bit of slack here, we'll do, we'll do this right here, probably. And then we'll probably, when we're all done, I'll snip off a little bit of this excess, excess wire that I left. But uh, let's, I'm going to check this. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Also, I don't know that my I don't know that my heat shrink will actually fit over my massive shameful solders. Let's see. Let's stretch that a little bit with some pliers. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. You know what, I'll do the same. I'll do the same thing here. We will cover all of our shame with this professional looking heat shrink. It'll be fantastic. I do have a heat gun. I will break that out. Uh, I think I'll break that out later. I'll make sure everything is kind of working first. Definitely will want to use my helping hands here to keep this thing positioned at least somewhere where I would like it. Can't really do my hard to do my physical connection thing here. Just I rarely do that. That's probably a bad idea. No, I'm doing it. All right, let's let's go. Now we have this done and we're going to move over to our positive wiring. Uh, we need our length for here. So we need enough that we can go uh, down through here and we want it to be roughly the, well, I can figure that out after. You know what we'll do? You know what we'll do? We'll actually cut it after we know exactly what we need. Now, can I get, oh yeah, it's a pretty big, <laughs> I made, a pretty large hole for that so so we're not even going to we're not even going to cut this yet we'll see exactly what we need so this channels here and here this will maybe we'll bring it up maybe we'll bring this up around like so so we're going to Uh, 
that for this guy. Uh, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to do the same thing. Oops. Oh boy. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'll leave a little slack uh, at the end. So we'll go here. And we'll go here. And we will strip off this insulation. Like so. Uh, and then, again, leaving a little bit of slack, maybe not as much as I left last time, we'll come down here. These are <laughs> not the best wire strippers. Probably need some new ones. But it's a poor carpenter who blames his tools. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I know there's probably lots of this where you're going to be like, oh man, why didn't you do a time lapse or speed it up? Um, I, I, I know when I was watching, when I've watched any mod guide, there are just definitely times where I want to see everything. Because I find as soon as you start fast forwarding, there's something that some poor person who doesn't know what they're doing will want to see better. Uh, so I, I definitely, I, I, I figure I'll do a few time lapses here and there, but I figure for the most part, you guys can, you guys can fast forward if you do not need to know something. I did this again. My, my soldering iron will just kind of cool down, but the indicator light makes it look like it's still, makes it look like it's still hot. It's very, very, very annoying. So this is, I mean, this is. You know, I, I make some parts of it look harder, but this is not an incredibly, you know, this would be a lot more work for something that was full auto because, you know, you're, then you're, you're wiring in a third motor uh, as well. With this, we just still have this manual pusher, um, which I'm completely fine with for this, for this Raven mod. I like the idea of it working just like it did, just a little, just a little better. Uh, so what we'll be using is one of these Zippy Compacts. Um, so we want to make sure when we're doing this that we attach the right side <laughs> of the connector. It is the big one. I might have to look up to, there's always, oh, this is marked. I was going to say, there's always, you can always tell which, which is negative and which is positive. Um, there's like a way to tell, but this is actually marked, so it's fine. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, well, I mean, I will say one thing, and that is um, they are shiny anyway. They could be worse. Uh, I'm going to put in, before I forget, well, I'm not going to forget this, but I'm going to put in the screws to my cage here. definitely still feel <laughs> there's a lot of wiggling 
I'm going to put some glue along there just a little bit just to see what that does. All right, I have one here. Uh, there's a little bit of glue in here. We're just gonna go along the cage here and here. This probably will be where I'll find out that this is a terrible idea. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I'm not putting a crazy amount. I just wanted to. I just wanted to hold a little better. All right, we'll let that set for a second. I might put the other half, I might put the shell on just to flip it over. Not even completely, but just to, um, yeah, just to, just to kind of go. Yeah, that seems like. Lots of slack. So we'll just kind of gently pull this over. We have <laughs> lots of room here. I'm going to clip this. I'm going to strip off a bit of the ends. Like so. I'm going to have a drink of coffee. Uh, I am going to try to uh, tin these a little bit uh, since I'm going to be putting them in the XT60 connector. What actually can work really well is to just have your helping hands hold the connector. That is our negative. Our positive is on this side. So that's going to go down in there. I'm going to have my helping hands hold the other side for a second while I possibly tin this. of wide shrink on here before we do this. I will want shrink on my XT60. As slack as I can be with some other shrink, that's an area where I do want it. Make sure we're... Yeah, it needs to be stretched out a fair bit. Bigger pliers might have actually helped. That's fine. Definitely, it is possible to have your cords be too, or your wires that you have left over be too long. Uh, I might be in a situation like that, but certainly better too long than too short. solder iron heat up it's being a pain um <laughs> i did this and i don't know that i'm gonna be able to check it uh whoops well it might be a no guts no glory type of thing And 
you're learning valuable, valuable things that you should not do. So, pretty handy, really. I mean, what are you gonna what are you gonna learn from watching someone do something correctly? Hmm? Uh, I haven't talked a whole lot about uh, tips or good practices when soldering, because as you can see, I, I'm not the person to give you that, uh, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> All right, we'll let that cool for a second, and then we're going to flip this back over, and we're going to do what you're not supposed to do, which is test with our LiPo. So hopefully, I don't cause a fire. We'll see. Put that in there like that. People probably cringing right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be that looked insane. All right, let's <laughs> unplug this. It looks like at least despite all of my things this thing is going to work so that's cool uh, i'm going to go get my heat gun i'm going to close i'm going to i'm going to put the heat up the shrink on some of these i might put some dabs of hot glue on some of these wires to keep them into uh just to keep them in place uh, and then i'm going to get this all closed up i would i would like a little bit better of a setup as far as like somewhere that felt safe to plug in plug in all my tools and all of my things. I, I do have a, you know, I actually I have a great workspace. Uh, I'm not complaining about that, but it would be, would be nice to just have a more convenient place to plug things in. Takes this guy, takes this guy, that guy a minute to cool down. All right, so we have all of our wiring done. Uh, we have a very annoying sound from my heat gun cooling down. We're gonna put that in there. We're gonna find a spot, our spot for our trigger again. <laughs> okay, we've been having a little camera trouble. I've had to do a couple things a couple times. Uh, we dropped off right around when I was putting the trigger back in here, uh, and then I did some testing and everything, but we lost camera. So all we really missed, I put this trigger back in here, I put this trigger lock back in here, and one thing I will note, when I closed up the shell, I had trouble getting it completely back together. Part of that was because I, for whatever reason, uh, put a screw in here and it was keeping the shell from closing so i took out that screw and now it goes together like a charm one thing i am going to do though uh before i before i get into uh too much else is i am going to lubricate the pusher uh the pusher arm a bit i found it's just it's an old this is an old old blaster the it was not in good shape when i got it like if you look at the old if you look at the old flywheels in here, they're just, everything is just filthy and, and, and dirty. So I think some lubricant in here would be an excellent idea. Uh, I'm not going to take this whole thing out. I just want to get, uh, I just want to get a little bit of lubricant down in the track where that's going to be running. I feel like I'm getting a little bit low on this stuff. Just kind of blop 
that was probably way too much that's probably why I'm low on it and we're just going to do 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 I'm gonna do that this goes in here and we're just gonna you know fix this all up perfect <laughs> I just realized I did all that and I'm planning on doing I'm planning on doing some more dremeling uh, that was maybe not the best plan. Oh well. Should have probably done that last. I, I actually should probably not put this back in so that I have a little bit of room here when I'm dremeling out this stuff and so I can clean out in there when I do. So I'm going to dremel out all these uh, support bits here. I'm going to take this lock back off. Uh, because I want to make a space for my battery to go in here uh, and sneak in through into the uh, into the battery compartment. Uh, I'll put that there. I want to make sure I don't bend anything too much. I sure wish I'd done this first. Anyway, learn from my mistakes. This is going to be pretty tight. That is a tight fit. But I think it will work. Wow, we gotta we gotta wipe all that out. <laughs> Lubricating this before I did that was monumentally uh, not smart. Anyway. I'm going to call it clean enough to fit things together. Um, in any case, I'm probably going to have to take this apart again to do a little bit of cleanup. I just want to see, I just want to see if this fits with this in. Because the when I have seen this idea done before, but it was a different, slightly different version of the Raven, and it looked a little different inside. Yeah, like that's not quite very close, but not quite fitting. Ah, this is stressful. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that'll work. <sighs> Blah. Okay. So, what am I forgetting here? Uh, let's put, let's put the, the other screws in to the blaster. 
I hope if you're watching this actually to see how to do anything and if in the end what I've done here makes is helpful at all um yeah I hope you I hope you learn from all the things that I just said I wish I had done do all your dremeling and then clean things up it's very easy to get impatient I find um yeah I don't think that wire I don't think a magazine is going to interfere with that wiring or anything so I think that's okay uh this is all good here I put a little lubricant earlier. I put a bit more. I put a bit of lubricant on this post. It was being a huge pain when I would close the shell. It was very hard to get it open again. So, oh, let's do a couple other things. Let's put that little guy in there. Uh, let's, this is this spring here. I am gonna put this back on. Boop, like that. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna remember to put this on this time. Which way does it go? This way and that way. Put this on like that. I'm gonna make sure you are in your your channel there. Hopefully that will stay there. I'll put things on carefully. I'm gonna put this guy on here. And I think, oh god, dust everywhere. So not smart of me. Uh, wow. Okay, let's see if this will close <laughs> with our battery in there. Well, it certainly seems to. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm going to. Oh boy, you know what's going to happen next. I'm going to close this all up. I'm not going to close it all up. I'm going to learn my lesson that I keep saying, which is don't close the blaster completely up until you've tested everything. I really like, obviously I really like uh, crazy custom looking things, but I, I actually really like the, the look of this Raven and everything. And I, I do think there's something really neat about having a blaster look like it originally looked as well. I might have to get a can of compressed air or something. Let's see if I can clean this out. That was very foolish of me. So what I want to see now is if I have room for my alarm. There we go. Just being a little slow. So I actually ended up kind of doing a lot of cable here accidentally. Maybe, maybe we got it. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty tight, but we, we got it. Got some wires there. Okay. Oh. Hmm. That was a little. Oh, we're getting some. We're getting some rub on the wires on the wires in here. I wonder if I don't have them in the same channel. Well, let's do a quick little test here. Things are, things are definitely, things are definitely too tight and snug inside of here. We're getting some issues. All right, so what do we got here? Oh, first one is pretty simple. I don't think I had the spring here in the track. So that is an easy fix. So that's good. OK, 
careless of me. I'm not sure why that wasn't a problem before. Huh. Uh, I am going to cut a little bit of a deeper... I think we have it, a sleeper modded Raven. The battery door is on it. Uh, I, tend, I put a couple of clips through. I seem to have a little tiny bit of an issue, but that seemed to straighten itself out. I think we're good. I'm gonna clean this up and go to the other camera. This is not the scene you want after you think you're done a project. Uh, I had to take the, I had to take things apart. Uh, I had a jam, I had a little bit of smoke. Uh, things were not working. Uh, so I took, I took everything apart. Uh, I, I checked the solder on my motors. Uh, things were loose in the cage. Uh, I used this tool that I 3D printed to uh, pop the, you can see they come up through there. I use them to pop the flywheels back off. Flywheels are kind of a pain to get off. And I realized I did something really stupid. I didn't actually add screws to firmly attach the motors to the cage. Things shifted and one of the flywheels would not turn, uh, which caused a jam, which can be can burn out these motors so quick. So I'm gonna fix that and hopefully it works again. So just forgetting to put in those four tiny, tiny uh, motor screws into the flywheel cage almost ruined my entire project. So always be careful, always check things step by step. That's the video, that's my guide on modding a Raven. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, it was pretty quick. Uh, I'm looking forward to my next project, which I think is going to be modding a Hyperfire with Select Fire and an OLED screen. Uh, it should be it should be a challenge and a step up from uh, even from this one. So, until next time, thank you.